Hey everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood pro-life activist Deirdre here. And yes, I am comparing slavery to abortion. We are currently in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, we're giving a couple of talks uh, among the interns. One of the talks that I am giving to people is strategy, which is basically talking about why we use the graphic images, which is exactly what I want to share with you all. And this one video is just going to be a little snippet of what my talk is going to be like. So today I'm going to explain how victim photography is a powerful image because it shows people the impact and it reminds us that we should not let it to continue. I work for the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, and in all of the forms of activism we do, we use abortion victim photography. We use this strategy because we're following in the footsteps of past successful social reforms. Today I'm going to be talking about how victim photography and its use have helped to end the slave trade. Most people are familiar with the Atlantic slave trade as being one of the most atrocious human rights violations in history. It was rooted in the belief that one person wouldn't be considered a person unless they were white. And as a result, many people suffered. Slaves were indentured servants that were given no rights or freedoms. Now this is a famous image that was created to work towards the abolition of slavery. Now this image had a profound impact on the movement to end the slave trade. This image created by Josiah Wedgwood was distributed by an organization who, just like CCBR, has a really long name. And because of that, I'm just gonna read it off here. The London Committee of the Society for the Abolition of the Slave Trade. This organization recreated this image on accessories and it had become a fashion statement, which totally blows my mind. This picture of a slave on one knee put on people's pins and bracelets and necklaces and brooches because they wore them back then. This image was proliferated by the culture, by the people who were trying to reform the culture. And now recently I've been doing a little research on this picture and I found this. So this is a little bit from the fourth annual report of the Board of Managers of the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society. This was written in 1836, and this is what they said about images. But the pictures, the pictures, they seem to have been especially offensive. And why? Unless it is because they give specially distinct impressions of the horrors of slavery. Pictorial representations have ever been used with success in making any desirable impression upon the minds of men, the bulk of whom are immediately and thoroughly affected by a picture than a verbal description. Why then should they not be used in the exposure we purpose to make of our national wickedness? If any of them represent what does not exist, let the falsehood be shown and reproved. But with what reason or justice are we called upon to suppress the picture, so long as the original is allowed to defile our land? To translate this into modern day language, why are people so upset about these graphic images, more than they are upset than the actual thing that it depicts? Now, if these images are false in any way, let that be shown, let that be brought to light. However, if they are real, then what follows from that? is that we should be more upset about the fact that it is real. Images like this expose the presence of cognitive dissonance. It shows the, the, the humanity of the victim and the inhumanity of their treatment. And it shows that there's something that's being called a harmless practice that really is a violation of another person's rights. In order to stand against injustice, people need to understand that there is an injustice in the first place. That's why these images are so important. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want to find out more about what I'm doing this summer or about... There's somebody walking by. If you want to find out more about what I'm doing this summer or even more about what it means to be pro-life, then check out my other videos and I'll see you next week.
Peace out.